Y'all requested, and due to popular demand, we have got an exclusive interview today with Diego Luna from the U.S. Men's National Team U-20s and RSL in MLS. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to another exclusive interview here on the channel. Today, we have Diego Luna from RSL and the United States Men's National Team U-20s. We'll be talking about the CONCACAF U-20 Championship, this U-20 cycle that got us back to the Olympics in the U-20 World Cup, MLS. We're also going to dive into who would win in a fight, Diego Luna or Jake Paul. Yeah, you'll get the answer during the interview. And we will also dive into U.S. men's national team NL3, United States and Mexico, since Diego Luna is a dual national and could play for both teams. All right, so smash the like button before we start and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content because I won't be asking during the interview and neither will Diego Luna. Okay, so let's play the intro and let's bring in Diego. All right, Diego Luna, we brought you here to the channel. First and foremost, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. And yeah, let's looking forward to it. So just right away, one thing I wanted to tell you, when we finished the CONCACAF U20 championship coverage, I asked viewers, fans, who do they want in the channel? Okay. And you won those elections. Yeah. <laughs> You won those elections, and that's how we try to reach out to you. So congratulations right there. You became one of the most popular players among the fan base during the U-20, and congratulations to unqualifying. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. So, Diego, before we start talking about the CONCACAF U-20, I want to ask you one thing here. Um, so they get a little bit of your background. Where did you grow up? Any other sports you might have played? And then we're going to dive into more of just focusing on soccer and dive right into it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm from uh, originally from Sunnyvale, California, right there in the Bay, and that's where I grew up. Uh, you know, I started playing soccer there for Palo Alto Soccer Club. You know, coached by my my brother, my oldest brother, and my and my father. And then yeah, that's kind of where it all started. All my whole family's from there and around that area, and yeah, off in the Bay. Did you ever play any sports besides soccer? Or was it was always soccer. It was always just soccer. I I love you know going out and playing like football or baseball and like tennis even like random sports with my brothers and like friends but i never like took another sport seriously but i i'd always love playing like you know just to pick up some games and stuff like that got it and I, we're gonna go in through that very quickly but before we go back to this topic i just want everyone to know where you grew up and now i know you only played soccer too the CONCACAF u20 championship let's walk through this entire cycle right because okay. you were there in the revelations cup i remember watching you for the first time there at the time you were in USL, now you're in MLS for RSL. From this cycle, talk a little about how it changed. Because I talked to Paxton uh, two weeks ago, I believe. And we were talking about how in that first camp, and I didn't mean to offend the team, but the U-20s looked very disjointed, right, yeah. as a team. But you guys went through other camps. And then we got to the U-20 championship, which... I didn't. I wasn't able to watch these other camps, but you all looked like a completely different team, and just ran over the opponents, which made it seem even easy. Even though we know it's not easy, it looked yeah. easy. What was this evolution about? A mix of coaching. How, how did you guys get so much better throughout these months? And just for context, Revelations Cup was in October or November of 2021, so yeah. it was roughly six months that you guys yeah. prepared. Yeah. No, definitely, 100%. I think, you know, coming into that Revelations Cup, it was kind of just throwing a bunch of players and a new coaching staff into a into a very difficult environment, right? And I think they just threw us all there just to kind of see where we're at, you know, see where we're at with new players, where we're at with a new staff, and then from there just kind of fix the things and, you know, you know, rank ourselves. And, you know, it didn't turn out good, right? Losing that 4-0 to, to Brazil off the first game wasn't really the best start. But um, I think it's something that was needed, right? You know, you got to see what players fit with what players, you know, players in different positions, all that stuff. And then what the, the coaching staff and everybody can see, okay, yeah, this is what we need to work on. This is what we're good at. Let's make these, you know, our strengths even stronger. So I think it was a very good thing. And over these six months, like you said, it was it was really good to just, you know, what was it? I think four, four or five camps of, you know, 10 to 12 days, whether that's in another country or in the States, that 
we got together and in those camps we really focused and we really you know bonded on and off the field making that chemistry and i think that's something that i was really missing just knowing guys that are like you know become your brothers and and, and friends and you could trust off the field and you, it just brings it onto the field and i think that's something that was very good and the coaching staff did an amazing job of just you know making our identity like very easy for us and kind of just what what we are and it paid off by you know seeing how it, how it worked out in the in the 20 championship yeah and are there talks of any youth camps coming up because now you guys will have the u20 world cup coming up next summer so it's sort of far but yeah. i mean you just talked about the importance of preparation exactly. is there any talks of camps coming up and then obviously the olympics that's a little bit further down the lane yeah. but what's going on have, here yeah so i have not heard of any of any camps coming up but i'm pretty sure you know something's coming because we've already have what, a month a month and a couple of days from from the the 20 championship so i think there's just been a little time off to to relax mm -hmm. people get back to their clothes but i think there's definitely something coming up and yeah we're looking forward to that i would hope since a lot of you guys are still in the u20s right it would be pretty cool if during the world cup they got you guys together for a little bit yeah no, yeah that would be pretty cool it'd be yeah. like it makes sense you know yeah We'll see how that one goes. I want to ask you one question, a little bit of something that happened during the tournament. I talked to other players already here in the channel, so I won't dive into the games as much. But let's go through the... Because I talked to all of them. Um, Antonio Carrera, Paxton, about this too, here in the channel. I wanted to go to you now. What happened in that fight there in Costa Rica? Uh, <laughs> Against yeah. Costa Rica, sorry. It was in Honduras. Yeah. yeah. No, it was just, you know, something that was just... It was bound to happen, you know? People have emotions. People have... You know, they're playing for big things, right? And it, it's something for their country and stuff. So, yeah, emotions get the best of people sometimes and, and things turn wrong. But, you know, I think it was good uh, good from the guys to, you know, collectively get get together and, you know, show a professional, you know, strong mindset to, you know, relax and, and then keep going throughout the tournament without letting that, you know, affect us. Yeah, I was, uh, I was telling my viewers when that was happening, I was trying to find you in that big mess right yeah. there. Because I told them that I thought you would one day beat up Jake Paul in a boxing match. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but 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 no, I couldn't. I didn't. None of the Americans got into a fight. But you should one day get into a boxing match with Jake Paul, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We'll see if later on if, if my career starts getting bit stuff. Get the following going, and, and we can see you know one of the little <laughs> boxing matches that happen and stuff. Let him get older. Let him get older. Yeah. Get, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, enough of the U20. Again, congratulations for qualifying back to the Olympics, the United States, and the U20 World Cup. Let's go talk about um, U.S. soccer at the club level, right? You played, and correct me if I'm wrong in anything, you played in the San Jose Earthquakes Academy for a yeah. bit. Then you moved to the Barcelona Residency Academy, which is where Caden played, Hoppy, Julian Araujo, some names that the viewers are probably familiar with. So... Can you tell us a little bit what happened there? Why did you leave one academy, go to another? Is there any actual reason? What happened? Yeah, so yeah, so I, like I said, I played for that Palo Alto Soccer Club, and then I uh, made the jump when I was 12 to play for the, the Earthquakes Academy, and I played there for about a year and a half, two years almost, and it was just a, it was a great place. I developed, you know, a, a huge amount, but I think I hit like a, a wall where I felt like I wasn't developing anymore and I feel like I needed a change. And so, you know, me knowing what I wanted to do, you know, for my career, I, I didn't want to be stuck in anything no more. So I made the leap and I, and I decided to move away from home and, and make that, you know, hard sacrifice for something that I wanted to achieve. And it, it all paid off now. But yeah, I went to, to Barca Academy and, and played with great players, developed a lot of mental strength. It was it was really good for me as a, as a person. And then, of course, me as a soccer player. And then from there, yeah, I just hopped over to, I got my first contract with El Paso Locomotive in the USL Championship, and then now to Real, Real Salt Lake. But it's been a hell of a journey. Yeah, so the Barcelona Residency Academy. So you moved there on your own because it's Arizona? Yeah, Arizona, yeah. So who else was there with you when you were playing? I know Caden was with you, right? Yeah, so I got there, and that year, I believe, there was a whole bunch of players. I played with, you know, Matthew Hoppy. Mm -hmm. uh Kaden Clark Julian uh Julian Araujo wasn't there when I got there I think he left the year before but then there's players uh Bryce Duke mm -hmm. um, he's, he's in Inter Miami yes yeah, he's in Inter Miami yeah Bryce Duke uh Julian Gaines who signed with LAFC 
um, yeah, a whole bunch of players that, you know, have, have made it to the MLS level and even farther. And I think that's, that's cool to see. And yeah, it was, it was, it was good. Yeah. Uh, it's Academy. Uh, I don't know too much about in the sense of actual experience, right. It's more of what I hear, but highly praised by many for sure. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're seeing proof of it with all you guys making it at the professional level. And you're all still very young. Uh, skipping ahead on that, I want to go to USL and MLS now, right? You played in USL last year and you did very well, well enough that you got to move to the American First Division MLS in RSL. So what exactly were the first differences you noticed among those the two leagues? Is there any struggles that you're having in MLS that you maybe weren't expecting? Yeah, no. Yeah, there's um. so I think it's happened to me everywhere I've went. Um, I have had like, I think it's a month and a half of time that every new place I arrive to, it's a, it's an adaption month, you know, adapting mm -hmm. and, and getting situated and, and getting comfortable with my surroundings and the people I'm with and all that and the environment I'm in. And I think for me, I'm, I'm exiting that month and a half right now. And I feel like these past two games I've subbed on for RSL have kind of been, you know, just, I'm, I'm just getting better and better and feeling more comfortable with myself and, and the players I'm playing with. So I think the, the struggle that I've had the first couple games with RSL were just kind of mental and kind of into a new situation, new environment and stuff like that. And I think that I'm, I'm integrating very well. And yes, of course, the, the speed of the game is, is much quicker, but I feel like it's, it's nothing that I can't handle. And I'm just excited to, you know, finally be comfortable and situated in, in, in Utah and, you know, start performing how I'm, how I'm meant to perform. Mm -hmm. Now, the, another question there in terms of USL and MLS, do you think from what you're playing, and I don't know if you can even respond to this right now because you haven't been long enough in MLS maybe to judge that. Do you think the gap is big or it's nothing too meaningful? Do you think USL clubs are perfectly capable of competing? Because and the, one of the reasons I asked that is we just saw Sacramento Republic make a deep run in the Open Cup. No, I, I definitely agree. And I definitely see that some teams in the USL can definitely hold their own in, in MLS and definitely compete. And there's a prime example right there, you know, having Sac Republic beat, what is it, four MLS teams in a row, three MLS teams in a row? At least three, at least three. Make it to the final. I think that's a, a perfect example. It's not just beating one and getting lucky. Yeah. Um, there's three teams that they've beaten and Sacramento Republic. And there's many other teams that compete with Sacramento Republic that have beaten Sacramento Republic. So I think there's there's no doubt that other teams can compete. And I think that people have taken USL lightly, but but there is a difference in the MLS and, and USL teams. But I think that people shouldn't, you know, throw USL, you know, too, too low to the ground compared to MLS. Now, a little bit about you in terms of your playing style. And the first thing I want to ask you is what is your preferred position? Because we saw that you can play on the wing, you can play as an attacking midfielder. What is your preferred position? Yeah, so um, my preferred position is I play as a, a number 10, you know. I like to get the ball in between lines, turn and, and create assists, go at defenders and, you know, score goals, right? That's that's what I like to do and I'm creative and I, I, I'm good with dribbling, I'm good with all that. So that's my preferred position, but I can also play yeah, on the wing, usually on the left wing. And then I can, I've started to become as more of an eight, you know, kind of a pivot mm -hmm. kind of, where I can also play down there and receive the ball low and create the game in front of me. But uh, my preferred position would be a, a 10. And I also have played the false nine, you know, coming in under, mm -hmm. you know, um, and yeah. But I play as a number 10, I'd say my best and, and my favorite position. What are you working on the most right now since you arrived in MLS? Is it more of, you, you've talked about, we've noticed in the U20s, uh, yeah. your qualities on your dribbling ability, creativity. Is there something that you feel like you need to work on right now and improve in the short and long term right away? This obviously, without giving me the answer that you're working on everything, because we're always get, trying to get better, but a focus you have right now. Definitely. I think with RSL, the main focus we have right now is, is my defensive, my defending and kind of making sure that, you know, I'm in the right places at the right time. And, and, you know, just defending overall all the situations and all the understanding, all the positions and the defensive responsibilities of all those positions. I think that's something that we're working a lot on at RSL because for me, I know, you know, with the ball at my feet and, you know, on the attack side, I'm a very strong player. And I think once I get my defending to be, you know, the top, top thing, I think it will, it will separate me, but yeah. 
it's probably also the next step for going before you go to Europe, right? Get that by that. I don't, I'm not saying you have to go to Europe, but just like you keep moving up on leagues. There's leagues better than MLS abroad. Some of them, some are worse too. That's the next step developing defensive intensity, work rate tactically. Diego, before we wrap things up, I'm going to go through a topic here um, that very often we ask you on the channel. People love to know because you are dual national. You can play for the U.S. in Mexico, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So what I wanted to dive into is not really ask you which national team you have a press preference for. None of that, right? Because yeah. normally people go towards that question. You growing up, growing up, talk a little about your household. Um, what are your ties with Mexico? Is it your family, your, your parents? Have you been to Mexico? Uh, just talk about yourself growing up in terms of your American and Mexican culture. Yeah, so, yeah, both parents are from Michoacan, Mexico. You know, I, I can play for the U.S. and I can play for Mexico. I think, yeah, it's 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 been a thing, you know, growing up where I've, I've you know, been able to have the chance to pick, you know, what country I want to play for, which is an awesome, you know, you know, dream and right. But of course, I've as people have seen, I've chosen to play for the U.S. and multiple times I've, I've played with the U.S. and I think it's something for me where I've grew up in the U.S. and the U.S. has brought me all the positives plus all the negatives that I've, I've been through. You know, they've mm -hmm. given me all the success and I've met a lot of people and everything throughout the U.S. You know, playing in the American soccer leagues, I think that's something that, that's made my mind, you know, towards USA. And there's nothing that takes me away from Mexico. I'd love to represent, you know, my my family and, you know, my, my ancestors and all that, that, you know, playing for Mexico would be an, an awesome thing as well. But I think for me, just growing up in the U.S., I'd like to represent the country that, you know, I've grew up in and stuff like that. So I think right now that's that's my decision, but there's no there's no right or wrong, you know. Got it. It's more of a, it's more of like currently it's the country. Maybe you feel more, would say inclined, not really decided. Yeah. 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 And obviously you are provisionally cap tied right now because of the U twenties. And, and there's also this whole cycle right now, cause it's exciting. You're going to play the U 20 world cup. You're going to play the, it could be in the Olympic, obviously got to make the roster, but you're, you're eligible. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's exciting. And, yeah, and as you can see, unfortunately, that, that you know Mexico didn't make the World Cup or the Olympics, so it's it's. Unfortunately for who? Not for me. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> that that support Mexico, you know that it sucks because you you know that would always cool you know to see USA and Mexico you know battle it out and stuff like that. But yeah, it's it's cool, and I, I think there's you know good opportunities coming up, and I'm excited for. It. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. The, the the U20 World Cup is going to be in Indonesia. It's a beautiful yeah. country. So try not to go to the beach too much when you're there. <laughs> um, I think um, for the most part, that's everything I wanted. I wanted to get the viewers to get to know you a little bit more. And I think they do know you a little bit more. Maybe in the future, we'll have you back whenever something else happens. Anything you want to add before you go? No, I just thank you for having me. And yeah, that's, that's awesome. And we're going to try to reach out to Jake Paul one day. One day. Okay, one day. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Diego, thank you very much. Best of luck in MLS. Best of luck with the United States U20s. Oh, even best of luck if eventually you end up representing L3, Mexico too, whatever it is. Thank you very much, Diego. Thank you, man.